How many of y'all agree with me? One thing that is needed um, today in homes is for men to be men, for fathers to be fathers, for daddies to be daddies, yeah, and for them to stand up. We need daddies to stand up, stand up and be the, the spiritual leader of their homes and, uh, and just to take, take the home back. That's one thing that is missing in our homes today is daddies. To be honest with you, it is. Anybody can, can be a father, but not very many people can be a daddy. There, there's, there's a difference right there. Amen. So, man, listen, I'm, I'm so thankful y'all are here today. If I had a title, I'm going to get right into the mess. Everybody good with that? I'm just go ahead and preach. Because I'm, re- I'm ready. To, I'm like a horse up in a chute right now. Come on, somebody. I'm ready to, to be set free, loose in this place. So, anyway, uh, everybody look up and say, Happy Father's Day. Come on. <laughs> happy Father's Day. Facebook, Happy Father's Day. If I had a, a title... Uh, today's message, I, I would title it, uh, man up, man up. Everybody say man up. Man up. Now, you say woman up, man up, whatever. Just know the difference between the two. <laughs> I, I don't mind y'all. So y'all me. So, uh, man up, man up. Everybody say man up, man up, man up. So recent reports, I, I'm big on reports I know not all of them is factual. I realize that. But I'm big on reports. I'm big on statistics. I'm big on numbers. Uh, matter of fact, God's big on numbers. He, made, he, made a, he named a book in the Bible, the book of numbers. Y'all, y'all cold as ice today. It's all right. Y'all get it here in a minute. So recent reports tells us because, listen, I want y'all to lean in because I'm going to set this foundation really quick. Because of the lack of fathers, the, the lack of daddies in homes, in the past 20 years, and I want y'all to think about this, the past 20 years, two decades, here's what has happened to our society. Listen, you can try to blame the schools all you want to. You can try to blame the churches, the leadership all you want to. I'm looking at you today. There comes a time in your life, you got to man up. I'm not going no farther until y'all give God praise in this place. Yo, come on, I know it's Father's Day. I, I know it's a special day, but you got to get this word. Those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Everybody say, man up. Yeah. So the last two decades, last 20 years, here's what's happened. Here's what's happened. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. Did y'all hear me? Listen, suicide's real. It's, 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 I deal with it all the time. I, I deal with it in this church. I deal with it through counseling. That, listen, that is in the last 20 years, that is a 300% increase in teen suicides. 300%. Does that bother y'all? That bothers me. That bothers me. Because that's the spirit of murder. Listen to this. 90% of all runaways, children, all runaway children are from fatherless homes. 90%. That's how important a daddy is. Listen to this. 85% of all children with behavioral disorders are from fatherless homes. I know some of y'all, when I was doing this, I'm sitting there going, I can hear somebody right now. Well, my kids got disorders uh, and I'm home. Oh, really? Sometimes you got to take them to the Holy Ghost woodshed. Sometimes you've got to tell that child, who is daddy? I'm the man of this household. I'm going to man up. Well, they'll, they'll run to the room. Take their door off the hinges. <laughs> yeah. See, y'all, we, we just parent different. <laughs> we just, uh, my, my son's here today. He's 30 years old, but I'm still his daddy. And if you raise them right, watch this. Blake knows when he comes into my home, it's honor time. It's honor time. And then when I go to his house, watch this. It's honor his time. That's his home. Y'all see how it works? Everybody, everybody say amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah, so listen to this. 71% of high school dropouts, 71% of high school dropouts are from fatherless homes. Are y'all getting this point today? 75% of children, youth, in drug treatment centers today are from fatherless homes. Listen to this. There's a 550% increase in violent crimes. 400% increase in illegitimate births. 200% increase in teen pregnancies. Listen to this. 85% of all youth in prison today 
are from fatherless homes, 85%. Listen to this, I'm going somewhere. Y'all know how prisons are built? How do they know how to, how to build a prison? How big do they know how to build a prison? There's three ways that when somebody is looking how, to, how many rooms does this prison need, how big do we build the prison? There's three ways that they build a prison. This is crazy, but it's truth. First way, first way they go by math scores. So please be a good math student. Come on, math teachers. Be, yeah, amen. Be, be, yeah, come on, Courtney. Well, yeah, there you are. Yes, amen. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they view the math scores. This is crazy. Number two, the reading scores. Are they, are, they, are they using their minds? Are they active? Math scores and reading scores. The third way that they know how big to build a prison. This is the truth. Do they come from a fatherless home? Do they come from a fatherless home? So reports show that 75 to 85% of children, youth, will end up in prison based on those three things. Now, I'm telling y'all, listen to me. This is some real stuff. You say, Brian, I'm waiting for a hoorah. We got to get down to the boorah first. You know what I'm saying? We got to get down to this real stuff. The home does not need a boss man. I'm, I'm going to preach right here. The home does not need a mean man. The home does not need a controlling man. The home needs a Holy Ghost, Spirit-filled man of God that is going to man up and take responsibility over his household. Watch, watch. I set the temperature in my house. Y'all missed that prayer. I'm going to praise myself happy on that one. If things are going bad, it's my job. Listen to me. I'm trying to pray. It's my job as the God man to set the temperature. We're not going to act like that. We're not going to talk. You say, well, Brian, what's she do when you do that? She's got a full-time job. <laughs> Listen, but I'm telling you, it's we as men. We don't need boss men and controlling men. We need spirit-filled men of God. And here's one thing I can promise y'all. And we know this is truth, but I'm going to say it again. If daddy gets it right, the home will get it right. That's good preaching, preacher. Yeah, if, da if daddy gets it right, I promise you the home will line up. I'll just promise you that. Not because that's what I said. That's what the, the Bible says. See, we have families today depending upon churches and schools and institutions. Last year alone, $1.2 billion was spent on juvenile and family counseling. $1.2 billion. Y'all know what Elkhorn Baptist Church could do with $1.2 billion? Yeah, build churches. Yeah. Put water wells over in India. Yeah, build shelters over in Africa. Yeah, help the homeless. Help the single parents. Build, build, I'm just telling y'all, we can do stuff like this. But I'm telling you, in Jesus Christ's name, it starts with daddy. So what do we do? Where do we go with situations like this? I started thinking, I said, you know, M Mother's Day. I told Dana, I said, I struggle with Mother's Day. I struggle with Mother's Day. I've never been a mama. <laughs> and and y'all ever notice Mama Day sermons, they're like, oh, you look pretty. You look cute. Oh, God, where'd you get the hat? You know, oh, God, I almost bought that outfit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Mother's Day's different. They, everybody cute on Mother's Day. Father's Day, you are sorry. You are heathen. You know what I'm talking about? This is different. You need to do better. You know? So I'm not going to do y'all like that today. Uh, amen. Thank you. Yeah. Because it's truth. Everybody pretty on Mother's Day, but something switches. Something happens on Father's Day. You know what I'm talking about? This is crazy. So listen, what do we do with this situation? Yes, it's not complicated. How many of y'all born again saved know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Come on. There's enough hands up right now. There's enough hands up right now. We can change this world. We can change this world. I refuse for our teenagers to be average. I refuse for a little children's ministry, a little youth ministry, and, oh, they're going to grow up, and all of a sudden, where do they go in college? And then all of a sudden, when they get 25 years old, they'll come to their senses, and they'll have a prodigal moment, and they'll come back home. The father's waiting on what to do. That's so Bible. That's so, it's just like, oh, God, that's the same story. There's got to be something different. And I'm looking at a bunch of men here today. If you'll be a man, if you'll man up, lead your household. Quit trying to be boss man, mean man, controller man. Be God's man. If you become God's man, I promise your wife will love you more. 
I'm going to go on. What do we do? Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. If you have your Bible, Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read quite a few little verses. And we're going to preach a little bit. Somebody's going to get saved and born again. Hopefully a daddy will get saved and born again, start leading his household. And man, everything will be good. You know what I'm saying? How many of y'all know it's hard enough with Jesus? I, I can't imagine trying to live in this stinking world without him. It's hard enough with him. I can't imagine without him. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. If y'all with me, say I'm with you. If not, we got the big Bible up here. And I'm going to skip down to verse 35 through 43. It's very important y'all get this. And uh, the Bible says, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side. Y'all want to know a real daddy, Lord, just did, a real daddy has a boat. And they play by the water, and they, they stay by the mountains. That's the three things that Jesus Christ did. On it. He always stayed by a boat. Now, if, man, if y'all go out and buy a boat and you can't pay for it, it's your fault. I didn't tell you that. When Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Verse 22. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, watch this man. Watch this man. It's so good. He fell at his feet. Oh, you'll never see me. I'm a big old boy. I ain't going to fall on no Jesus' feet. Oh, you will one day. And I just say, let's have dress rehearsal now. <laughs> let's just go ahead and worship him and fall at his feet now. Let's get our praise down now. Let's don't wait till we die and get to heaven and say, well, I'm going to worship him now. What? No, you may not make it to heaven. So I see it's so good. He said he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly. I love that. Y'all underline that. He pleaded he begged. He knocked on the door. He came and got earnestly with him. And here's what he said. Listen, my little daughter is dying. Something close to me is dying. Something that I love is dying. Watch this. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and alive. I love this. So Jesus went with him. And the large crowd followed and pressed around him. How many of you know... Why in the world, when I read the Bible, I'm sitting there going, why, why do they want to press around him? Leave him alone. Let him do his thing. Watch this. Press around him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead. She's died. I, I'm telling you all, I put my stuff in this story. Unreal. And they said, why bother the teacher anymore? She's dead. She's gone. But they don't know Jesus. You know what that tells me? The people that were following him. Oh, it's the preach all by itself. They really wasn't following him. They really wasn't. You know people who are true followers? They know when Jesus shows up, something's getting ready to change. Now, I'm talking when Jesus walks in the house, it don't matter if the right side or the left side's not worshiping him. But as for me and my house, we're going to praise the Lord. There's something powerful when God shows up and his followers know it. Something's getting ready to happen. Y'all watch this. Something's getting ready to happen at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Not because I'm your pastor. Not because we got good praise and worship. But watch this. God is in the house. And when God's in the house, something good happens. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it's good. It's good. They knew it. Watch. They was around him. They were following. They were touching. They were bumping into him. And all of a sudden, they said, ah, don't bother him no more. She's dead. She's gone. See, some of y'all have some dead dreams that you thought was gone. And God's going to resurrect them today. Some of y'all have some dead situations in your life that you thought was dead, gone, and never. Just leave Jesus alone. I've done quit praying about it. I, God can't, I feel the Holy Ghost. God can't touch me no more. I've done gone too far. And God says, hold on, I ain't showed up yet. But when God shows up, I'm trying to, I ain't even got the sermon yet. Whew. Lord have mercy. Watch this. Don't bother, don't bother Jesus. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Quit praying about it. It's dead. It's gone. I'm so glad I got a God knows how to get back up. And I believe what I'm preaching. I believe this stuff. Watch this. Overhearing what they had said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Verse 37. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John. That's another sermon. He made everybody else leave who was doubting. But three. I just wonder the people that's in your crowd. Are they blessing you? Or where, where's your crowd at? Isn't this amazing? There was a bunch of people that was following him, bumping up against him. And all of a sudden when he said, oh, she's dead, they left. 
But he said, I need some Holy Ghost. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I've got three that's going to stand beside me. My granny was right. She said, you can count your true friends on one hand. He sent the rest of them away. He said, but I'm going to keep three. I love this. And notice Peter, James, and John was the ones that followed him to the garden. Y'all remember that? Followed him to the garden. When they came home from the synagogue leader, when Jesus saw the commotion, the people were crying and wailing out loud. Verse 39, he, Jesus, went in and said to them, what is all this commotion and wailing about? And they said, the child is dead. The child is dead but asleep. Well, there's confusion right there. Is she dead or is she asleep? There's a difference. Come on, y'all. Is somebody dead or somebody asleep? See, I, I'm telling you, y'all got to work with me because the Holy Ghost is speaking to me right now. <laughs> y'all just got, I'm going to veer off just for a second. When God's speaking, I'm going to obey God. Listen, some of you are dead, but some of you are just asleep. So some of you are spiritually dead, and some of you may be your first time back up in church, but and, you, and you got something in you, and God today is going to shake you, and all of a sudden, that what was asleep is going to be resurrected. Somebody give God praise. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they laughed at him, but, and, he, and he put them all out. Watch this. He put them all out. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him. There was five of them. Five means grace. And they went in where the child was. Verse 41. He took her by the hand and he said to her, Talithia kum. And that's not speaking in tongues. That's Aramaic. Which means, little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. Youth, get up. Adults, it's time to get up. Elkhorn Baptist Church and all those watching by Facebook Live today, it's time to get up and be the church in Jesus' name. Man of God, get up in Jesus' name. I'm telling y'all, I feel that in my spirit today. Get up in Jesus' name. Talithia kum. Talithia kum. Talithia kum. I can let my tongue loose right here, I'm telling y'all. I can let it loose and watch it go. Yeah, y'all say, I want to learn how to speak in tongues. Just start saying, Talithia kum, and all of a sudden, boom, and it come. And see, I used to be embarrassed of the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed anymore. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. I'm glad. I'm glad that I am a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled pastor. There's a difference between preaching and anointed preaching. There is a difference between singing and anointed singing. There is a difference in living just an ordinary life than living a Holy Ghost spirit-filled life. Somebody know, if you're spirit-filled, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody, is anybody spirit-filled and you know that there is a difference in just going through life and having purpose behind the mission? Oh, I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, get up, Talithi Akum. Immediately, the little girl, immediately. She didn't wait five minutes. She didn't wait 10 minutes. She didn't wait for a benediction. She didn't wait for an altar call. Immediately, she got up. And to begin to walk around, she was 12 years old. Jesus Christ was 12 years old when he preached in the temple. There's something about 12. At this, they completed and they, they, they were astonished. You know, that reminds me of a lot of Christians. We pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And when God answers the prayer, we're astonished. Why don't we live like he's already answered it? If you live like he's already answered it, it, it changes everything. Changes everything. He gave strict, and, strict orders not to let anyone know about this. Don't let don't anybody know about this. You know why? Because the crowd's going to come back. And you know what? There's a lot of people that show up for church for the... <laughs> What's going to happen today? Yeah. And uh, he told them to give her something to eat. She must have been Baptist. Y'all want scripture on there is Baptist? Right here. Right here's one. Yeah, it will look okay. Um, what Jerry saw in her, in her father, let's talk about this really quick. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Everybody say, happy Father's Day. So what Jairus' daughter saw in her father, there's something in this scripture that I think we miss. And I want to give it to you. I promise you. I'm not going to keep you long. I hope not. But number one, number one, she saw he was not ashamed to seek out Jesus. That really stuck out in my spirit. I believe we got a lot of fathers today when it comes to praise. Now, you'll get emotional about a ball game. 
You, you'll get emotional about other things in life. But when it comes to raising your hands and praising God or just giving God praise, honor, and glory, there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but I think every man, including me, I think every man deals with this. We, 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 we wonder what others think until it comes to a little ball going up and down a court or men in spandex going up and down a football field. I don't understand that. We'll talk about men in spandex, but uh, we won't talk about God. But she saw that he was not ashamed to seek out Jesus. Y'all realize in this verse, it says, as soon as he seen Jesus, he fell to his knees. He fell to his knees. He fell to his knees and he asked to start worshiping God. There is something special. I want y'all to hear my heart. There is something special, not because I'm a pastor, but when a man of God will lead his family and fall down at the feet of Jesus, there is something special about a man of God who is not ashamed to praise Jesus Christ. There's something different about that too. There is. He sought out Jesus. He, he, saw, he didn't send his wife. Oh, I had to preach all by itself. Or someone else, Jerry said, I've got to find Jesus. And I will do whatever it takes to find Jesus Christ. And this got his daughter's attention. Because she said, daddy's up. Daddy's manned up. Daddy's not sending mama to Jesus. This is his daughter. I can see her. I, when I read the Bible, Jimmy, I think about all the characters. What's the daughter thinking? What's the daddy thinking? What's the mama thinking? You've got to put yourself in that book. What if you got the news your daughter just died? Would that get your attention? It wouldn't mind. It, it, it wouldn't mind. Because there's something about your babies. And they never get too old for you to love. You just love your babies. I think as they get older, you hurt more. Someone, somebody help me preach right there. You, you're more concerned about them. They're not under your roof no more. They're out on their own and you're praying to make good decisions. But there's something about it when your child knows when all hell breaks loose, I got a daddy that will man up. I got a daddy that will praise it up. I got a daddy that will fall on his knees and give God praise up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's something special about that. I'm telling you what children need today. They need to see their daddies worship God. You'd see that. They need to see daddies leading the homes. Listen to me. I love women. Oh, I love my wife. I got to preface this stuff. Y'all would not believe the emails and the text messages. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me rewind this. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at right now. <laughs> How come every time my mama comes? Y'all remember the, uh, the, the Mother's Day, right? Y'all, Jimmy, you don't remember this one? So uh, I, I said, women, take care of yourself. Y'all remember that? Yeah, I know y'all do, y'all don't let me forget about it. I said, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell y'all no more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's get back to this one. Um, but listen to me. It is not the woman's job to lead the home. And I get in trouble for saying this, but here's the deal. Listen to me. I'm not talking about the man be a controlling jerk. <laughs> I'm not talking about the man be a mean man. But listen to me, women, y'all lean in. It is your husband's job. If he is following God, you are responsible to come under his leadership and allow him to lead your house. Watch. Y'all want to see a home that's out of order? You let the woman lead it. See, y'all are chickens. Dude, we got men sitting there going, my God. Y'all are really glad I said that, man. But you're sitting there going, oh, God. Oh, God. That's why they call it God man. Not mean man, boss man. I'm not talking about controlling man. If you, women, listen. If you've got a husband that loves God, that is sold out to Jesus Christ, let him lead your home. You'll line up. And matter of fact, Proverbs, no, I ain't going to go there either. in my mind. So we, we, need, we need daddies back in the house. We need daddies to say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to come to the altar at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I'm not ashamed to take my wife and my children by the hand and lead them to the altar. Watch, don't wait for something to happen bad before you become a praying daddy. 
Don't wait for something to have tragically happen in your life where you got to seek Jesus Christ. If you'll learn to praise him in the dark times, when the light is shining, I'm telling you, you'll beam, baby. You'll do something good for God. Number two, I'm going somewhere. Number two, she saw he was not ashamed to bring Christ into the home. I want to hone in on this one. His daughter, her daddy, Jairus, left, bowed down, wasn't afraid to worship God. God, I need you. God, I need you. My daughter's sick. My daughter is sick. She's going to die. And God says, I'll go with you. How many of y'all are thankful that no matter what the situation is, God will go with you? God will go with you. He'll go with you. Watch this. He didn't say, no, you go. And he said that before. He said, let me go with you. Let me hurt with you. Let me, let me go with you. And I love this. I mean, I want you to lean in. I want you to listen very carefully to what I'm getting ready to say because this is so deep and so good. I don't want y'all to miss this. Man, listen, you are the spiritual covering over your home. You are the spiritual covering over your homes. Now, listen to me. Just as a roof covers a home, that's what a spiritual father does. He is the roof of the home. He's the one when the rain and the wind and the storms and things are happening, I'm telling you, it hits the roof first. You've got to have a man of God, daddy, a father, that when the storms are coming, that they don't run, they know how to fight. And they know that when the rain's hitting the roof, even the daughter and the children and the wife says, you know what? Jairus to stand up. Listen to this. Men, you will stand before God one day. We, we know this here, but I want this to drop to here. Men, look at me. We will stand before God one day. And you will look him in his eyes. In Revelation chapter 2 says his eyes are like fire. That the wood, hay, and the stubble cannot stand. But if you've got gold and silver in you, it'll purify. You will stand before God one day and give an account on how you run your home. Do y'all hear me? You will stand before God one day and give an account on how your home is being ran. I highly advise we better invite Jesus in. Y'all remember the, the, the first Passover in the Bible? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that Passover? When they put the blood on the, the doorpost? Y'all remember that? How many of y'all remember that story? Let, let, me, let me give you this real quick, real quick. God spoke this into my heart. I'm going to give it to you. Um, it was the man who had to apply the blood. We miss this, but it's so powerful. He didn't call the, the wife. He didn't call the woman. He didn't call the children. He says, if you are the man of your home, you are the covering of your home, you are responsible to put the blood on the post. Let me tell you how important this is, Mike. If the man, watch, if the man did not apply the blood on the post, there was going to be a death angel ha, 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 that was going to sweep through the land and it was going to take the, the man, the wife's firstborn. It was going to take the firstborn child. Mom, that means me. I'm the oldest one in my family. It would have got me. And I can't tell you how many times the old death angel <laughs> has tried to sweep me out of this place. Take me out of here. Bring sickness and depression upon my life. But thank God I had a praying mama. Thank God I had a praying daddy. Thank God I had a praying church. Because when the blood is applied to the life, the death angel will pass you by. I'm telling you, listen, it was the daddy's responsibility to put the blood on the post. It was the daddy's responsibility to put the blood on the post. Can I tell y'all that still applies today? I know it's OT. I think it means overtime. I know that's, that's 6,000 years ago. And I know some of you are saying, Brian, that's just old school. I'm just telling y'all today, if it wasn't for the old, you wouldn't have the new. Thank God for the praying daddies. Thank God for the praying mamas. Thank God that they know how to apply the blood. That when the devil gets after your children, you can say, oh, no, devil, you're done trespassed. You've done crossed over the line. You've done messed with the wrong family. I know how to put the blood on the post. Come on, somebody. Give God praise in here today. Come on. Come on. Come on, you bloody post. <laughs> Come on, you bloody men. Come on, you daddy. You ought to know how to pray. 
we got to stand up and pray and apply the blood over our homes. Pastor Joey, I wrote this down, and I know he, he, he won't mind me using this. We talk a lot. I spend more time with Joey than I do with my family a lot of times. You get to know people, you spend time with them. So we talk about our children a lot, talk about our families a lot. He said something that changed my life. And uh, I took note of it, and I didn't know when I was going to get to use it, so, but today I get to use it. Joy said this, Pastor Joy said this, and I, and I quote, because I wrote it down. Joy knows I'm a note taker. He says, I get one chance to raise my children. And I'm going to raise them right. Look, we get one chance to raise our children. I'm telling you, Blake, Blake's 30 years old. I held him when he was two. Time flies. Time flies. He said these words, and I wrote it down. He said, I'm going to raise them God's way. I'm going to pray God fills all my family with the Holy Spirit. I pray that God sends all my daughters God's man. I get one chance, and I'm going to do it right. We get one chance to raise our children right. And I pray as I'm standing here talking to somebody here today. That if your child is beside you, I've got, my, I've got my son here today. I've got my daughter here today. I've got my daughter-in-law here today. I've got my two grandsons, Beckham and Walker, here today. And little Walker's like a little horse in a chute. He's like, be pop, be pop. He can't wait to come up here. He'd do it right now. And my mama's here. What I'm trying to tell y'all is there's blood on the post. What I'm trying to tell y'all is when life gets you down and you don't know which way to go, I'm telling you something powerful about a praying daddy and a praying mama that will put blood on the post for you. I'm standing here today because of a bloody post. I'm telling y'all truth. I shouldn't be here today. And a lot of you, I know you, you shouldn't be here. But if there was not a bloody post in your life, somebody grabbing the post and hanging on and saying, I'm not letting go until the death angel passes them by. I, what I'm saying is this. Don't, don't ever stop being a daddy. Travis, we talked about this. Brooke, here's Brooke. And Bree, man, I seen a picture of you and Jamie and them two precious girls the other day. And Dana said, I'm going to take a picture and show it to them. Y'all were a lot younger. But watch this. They're beside you today. Y'all get what I'm preaching? Do y'all get what I'm saying? Do y'all understand that there's something powerful about that stuff? And you never, watch, you should never get over it. You just never, ever get over it. Number three, and I'm out of here. She saw he was not ashamed to express his love toward her. Whew. God, if I can preach this. She saw he was not ashamed to express his love toward her. He loved his daughter. He loved her. And he said, I will do whatever it takes to get my baby well. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure she's okay. And listen, I thought about this too. This is my sermon, so I'm going to preach it. I thought about this little girl becoming a mama herself. I thought about this girl one day becoming a woman and having children herself. And I can just see, y'all remember the old papa and grandma stories. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I can just see them in my spirit. How this mama called her children forward. And she said, let me tell you a story about papa. Let me tell you what papa did. And I'm just telling you, she said, I can just hear her in my spirit today. The little ones may not have ever even seen their papa, but he's still alive. She said, you know what your papa did? Let me tell you what kind of man of God your papa was. Your papa was not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Your papa, when he seen Jesus, oh, you should have seen him, honey. He, the first thing he did, he didn't, he didn't say, what are you going to do for him? He said, I'm going to bow down and I'm going to worship God and I'm going to give him praise while I'm in his presence. Oh, honey, you don't understand what papa did. Papa, he worshiped God. He wasn't ashamed of it. He brought Jesus back to the house. He didn't leave Jesus at church. 
He didn't leave Jesus on, on vacation. He brought Jesus home. I feel the Holy Ghost on this one. And listen, honey, I know. Listen to me. When Jesus showed up, me, your mama, I was dead. I was dead, but your papa had such a praying life. He put blood on the post. Your papa prayed over your mama. And your mama's alive today and talking to you because papa knows how to apply the blood. Amen. Telling you. When y'all bury me, or the rapture takes place, I promise y'all, my, it's my heart. It's my heart. We've all had problems. We've all had issues. We've all had things go wrong. Praise team, you guys come. We've all had that. You know what I want y'all to remember me by? Not that I spoke in tongues. They're, they're going to fade. Not that prophecy was in the house. Watch, that's gonna, it's going to come and go. It's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's going to come and go. It's going to go. When y'all look over in that casket, I want y'all to remember me that I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and all my strength. That I just love God. That I wasn't a perfect pastor. Never will be. Watch this. You're not either. You're not either. Watch me. You're not either. I know you're big and you're bad and you're a big man. Watch this, but you got clay feet. And what I'm telling you today is this. I want to be remembered that how much Brian Raffrey loved Jesus Christ. And the second thing I want to be remembered by is, watch this, that he was crazy about his family. Listen, there's one thing that I, 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 I tell people this all the time. When the enemy comes after my family, it's fighting time. It's fighting time. And watch this. Real men know how to fight in the spirit. Not like this. Real men know how to fight in the Holy Ghost. Real men know how to be the covering over their family. Real men know how to fight in the spirit. They know that. So this morning, <clears throat> I got up. Didi, I hope you're okay. So I got up. My daughter, she wrote she me a letter. And um, I want to share this with y'all because um, Hallmark can't do this. This is from my little DD. And this is why I'm alive. Dear Dad, happy Father's Day. <laughs> I'm so thankful that God chose you to be my father. We adopted her. But God chose me. How many of y'all are thankful God don't have stepchildren? We're one big family. She said, I'm so thankful that God chose you to be my father. I can't even see. I'm so grateful for all the laughs we've shared. And me and Dee can giggle good. The impact you've made on me. The times you've helped me through my problems. And the support you continue to give me. And not only me. Not only are you my father. But you're a father figure. A spiritual father. To those who don't even have a father. Or have a good relationship with their father. I'm thankful. That I have a father like you. I pray that my future husband has got me. Because <laughs> this is the way I live. I pray that my future husband will be as good of a father to my children as you are to me. I am proud to be Brian Rafferty's daughter. <laughs> I thought I'd never hear that. I hope I make you proud. Thank you for everything you do for me, my family, and our church. I love you so much, Dad. Dee Dee. Yeah. So I share that with y'all. 
Listen, time out. I share that with y'all for this purpose. I found this out being a youth pastor and I found this out by being a parent. Y'all want to see your children smile? Show it for a ball game. Show it for a ball game. Some of y'all are so stinking busy. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're so busy working. And I feel this in my spirit at this church right now. You're so busy working. You're working and you're working and you're working. You get one chance to raise your children. I'm calling men to call time out. Work will be there tomorrow. Hay will be in the field tomorrow. But that child is sitting beside you right now. You get one chance to raise them. And I plead the blood of God that you will raise them right. Yeah. Raise them right. You watch when a daddy shows up for a ball game. Woo. Blake was playing t-ball. And one of my favorite memories about Blake. There's a bunch. But this one stands out. Blake was little. I'm talking little. Couldn't even hold the bat right. It was, the bat weighed more than him. He'd go down like that. Now he's packing two bats. Um, I showed up for a ball game. Blake was in the outfield. And as soon as he saw me, here he come. And I'm like, Blake, go back. Go back. I mean, he was gone. And I didn't, when he got there, I didn't say, bad boy. What are you doing? Get on that field, boy. Catch that ball. I didn't do that. I just kneeled down. I said, I love you, son. Go get them. Y'all see what I'm saying? Daddies, you're important. You're needed in your home. Listen to me. Drew, you get one chance to raise them girls. Thank God you're a daddy that comes to church. Well, I don't know. I, I'll come to church when I want to. All right, go ahead. Don't, don't be calling me. Don't, don't be calling me when, when it goes south. Because y'all watch this. Raising a girl, it's going to go north, east, south, and west. Come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. It's going to go that way. What's wrong with me? I've got a wife, a daughter, and two girl dogs. You know what that means? Y'all pray for your pastor. I don't fix two girl dogs. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm done. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Daddy, this is what I'm going to ask y'all to do. Y'all ready? COVID's over. COVID's over. No more, look, Facebook, no more, no more excuses. The masks are gone. God demasks us. Isn't that good? He demasks us. Yep. This altar's open. I don't know when the last time you prayed over your children, but today I felt instructed by God. It's time to put the blood on the doorpost. Well, Brian, they're they're living like Jerry Springer. I done told y'all. It's time to pray over your children. It's time you say, Brian, what, what am I going to pray? That tells me a lot about your prayer life right there. Just pray. God, thank you for my children. God, thank you for a church that allows children to be children. God, thank you that we're here today and I can worship with my children. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, have your way. Bless these men. Lord, let them stand up and be men of God. I pray to God like Jarius. Lord, put blood on the post today. Have your way. Bless these people. Bless these families. And Lord, use them for your glory. I pray this prayer believing to God that something's getting ready to shift. Something's getting ready to change. And Lord, I pray and I plead the blood of God over every man under my voice today. May they become the man of God that you have created them to be. Lord, it's time to man up. So man is up today. In Jesus' name, in all God's people said, amen. Everybody stand to your feet. This altar's open. Y'all do what you want to do, but I'm begging you. Daddies, take your family by the hand. You never know the impact that you're making on somebody. In Jesus Christ's name, God have your way.
Be blessed. Amen.